I'm Julie Hyman, host of Yahoo Finance's Market Domination, here with our tech editor, Dan Howley. NVIDIA has done it again, the chip giant blowing past analyst expectations in its strong fiscal first quarter. Data center revenue alone soaring by 427% year over year. And the company also gave another bullish sales forecast, which shows that AI spending momentum continues apace. On top of all that, the company also announced a 10 for one forward stock split and raised its dividend. Joining us now, NVIDIA founder and CEO Jensen Wong, fresh off the conference call. Jensen, welcome. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm happy to be here. Nice to see you guys. You too. I want to start uh, with Blackwell, which is your next generation chip. It's shipping this year, you said on the call. You also said on the call, we will see a lot of Blackwell revenue this year. So if we're looking at about $28 billion in revenue in the current quarter, and Blackwell is a more expensive product than Hopper, the chip series out now, what does that imply about revenue in the fourth quarter and for the full year? Well, it should be significant. Yeah, Blackwell, Blackwell, uh, and, and as you know, we guide one quarter at a time. And uh, but what I what I could tell you about about Blackwell is this: this is this is um, uh, a giant leap in in um, uh, in AI, and it was designed for trillion parameter AI models. And this is, as you know, we're already at two trillion parameters. Uh, model sizes are growing about doubling every six months, and the amount of processing. Uh, between the size of the model, the amount of data uh, is growing four times. And so the ability for uh, these data centers to keep up with these large models really depends on the technology that we bring bring to them. And so the uh, Blackwell is is uh, designed uh, also for incredibly fast inferencing. And inference used to be about recognition of things, but now inferencing, as you know, is about generation of information, generative AI. And so whenever you're talking to ChatGPT and it's generating information for you or drawing a picture for you or recognizing something and then drawing something for you, that generation is a brand new uh, inferencing technology is really, really complicated and re requires a lot of performance. And so Blackwell is designed for large models, for generative AI, and we designed it to fit into any data center. And so it's air-cooled, liquid-cooled, x86, or this new revolutionary processor we designed called Grace. Grace Blackwell Superchip, and then um, uh, you know supports uh, infinite band data centers like we used to, but we also now support a brand new type of data center, Ethernet. We're going to bring AI to Ethernet data centers. So the number of ways that you could deploy Blackwell is way way higher than than Hopper generation. So I'm excited about that. I, I want to talk about the the inferencing, Jensen. You know, some analysts have brought up the idea that as we move over towards inferencing from the the training that there may be some in-house companies, uh, uh, processors from companies, the, those made from Microsoft, Google, Amazon, may be more suited for the actual inferencing. I guess, how does that impact NVIDIA then? Well, inferencing used to be easy. You know, when people started talking about inference, uh, generative AI didn't exist. And now generative AI is, is uh, uh, of course, is about prediction but it's about prediction of the next token or prediction of the next pixel or prediction of the next frame. And all of that is complicated. And, and generative AI is also used for um, understanding the con in order to generate the content properly, you have to understand the context and what, what is called memory. And so now the memory size is incredibly large and you have to have uh, context memory. You have to be able to generate the next token really, really fast. It takes a whole lot of tokens to make an image, it takes a ton of tokens to make a video and it takes a lot of tokens to be able to uh, reason about a particular task so that it can make a plan. And so gener the, 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 the gener generative AI um, era really made inference a million times more complicated. And as you know, the number of chips that were intended for inference uh, kind of kind of fell by the wayside. And now people are talking about building new chips. You know, the versatility of NVIDIA's architecture makes it possible for people to continue to innovate and create these amazing new AIs. And then now Blackwell's coming. So in other words, you think you still have a competitive advantage even as the market sort of shifts to inferencing? We have a great position in inference because inference is just a really complicated problem. 
you know, and the software stack is complicated. The type of models that people use is complicated. There's so many different types. It's just going to be a giant market market opportunity for us. The vast majority of the world's inferencing today, as as people are experiencing in their data centers and on the web, a vast majority of the inferencing today is done on NVIDIA. And so we, we I expect that to continue. Um, you said on the call a, a couple of times that you'll be supply constrained for both Hopper and then Blackwell uh, chips well until next year because of the vast demand that's out there. Um, what can you do about that? Are there any sort of levers you can pull to help increase supply? Hopper demand grew throughout this quarter after we announced Blackwell. And so that kind of tells you how much demand there is out there. People want to deploy these data centers right now. They want to put our GPUs to work right now and start making money and start saving money. And so so that that demand is just so strong. Um, you know, it, it's really important to take a step back and realize that what we build is not a GPU chip. We call it Blackwell and we call it GPU, but we're really building AI factories. These AI factories have CPUs and GPUs and really complicated memory. The systems are really complicated. It's connected by NVLink. There's an NVLink switch. There's InfiniBand switches, InfiniBand NICs, and then now we have Ethernet switches and Ethernet NICs, and all of this connected together with this incredibly complicated spine called NVLink. And then the amount of software that it takes to build all this and run all this is incredible. And so these AI factories are essentially what we build. We build it as a as a holistic unit, as a holistic architecture and platform, but then we disaggregate it so that our partners could take it and put it into data centers of any kind. And every single cloud has slightly different architectures and different stacks and our, our stacks and our architecture can now deeply integrate into theirs, but everybody's a little different. So we build it as an AI factory. We then disaggregate it so that everybody can have AI factories. This is just an incredible thing, and we do this at very hard, very high volume. It's just very, very hard to do. And so every every component, every every part of our data center uh, is the most complex computer the world's ever made. And so it's sensible that almost everything is constrained. Jensen, I want to ask about the uh, cloud providers versus the the other industries that you said are are getting into the the generative AI game or or getting Nvidia chips. You had mentioned that uh, in uh, comments in the actual release, and then we heard from uh, CFO Colette Kress uh, that 40%, mid 40% of data center revenue comes from those cloud providers. As we start to see these other industries open up, what, is, what does that mean for NVIDIA? Will, will the cloud providers kind of uh, shrink, I guess, their share, and then will these other industries pick up where those cloud providers were? I expect, I expect them both to grow. Uh, a couple of different areas, of course, uh, the consumer internet service providers. This last quarter, of course, uh, big stories from Meta, the uh, the incredible scale that that um, uh, Mark is investing in. Uh, Llama 2 was a breakthrough. Llama 3 was even more amazing. Uh, they're creating models that that are that are activating. Uh, large language model and generative AI work all over the world. And so so the work that Meta is doing is really, really important. Uh, you also saw uh, uh, Elon talking about uh, the incredible infrastructure that he's building. And and um, uh, one of the things that's that's really revolutionary about about the the version twelve of of uh, Tesla's uh, full self-driving is that it's an end-to-end -end generative model. And it learns from watching videos, surround video, and it it learns about how to drive uh, end to end and gener using generative AI uh, uh, predict the next the, the path and the and the uh, how to steer the, the uh, uh, how to understand and how to steer the car. And so the the technology is really revolutionary, and the work that they're doing is in incredible. So I gave you two examples: uh, a startup company that we work with called Recursion has built up a supercomputer for generating molecules, understanding proteins, and generating molecule molecules for drug discovery. Uh, the list goes on. I mean, I, we can go on all afternoon, and and just so many different areas of people who are who are now recognizing that we now have a software and AI model that can understand and be learn, learn almost any language. The language of English, of course, but the language of images and video and chemicals and protein and even physics, and to be able to generate almost anything. And so it's basically like machine translation. And 
uh, that capability is now being deployed at scale in so many different industries. Jensen, just one more quick last question. I'm glad you talked about yeah. um, the auto business and, and what you're seeing there. You mentioned that automotive is now the largest vertical, enterprise vertical, within data center. You talked about the Tesla business, but what is that all about? Is it is it self-driving among other automakers too? Are there other functions that automakers are using um, within data center? Help us understand that a little bit better. Well, Tesla is far ahead in self-driving cars. Um, but every single car someday will have to have autonomous capability. Uh, it's it's safer, it's more convenient, it's more more fun to drive. And in order to do that, uh, it is now very well known, very well understood, that learning from video directly is the most effective way to train these models. We used to train based on images that are labeled. We would say this is a this is a car, you know, this is a car, this is a sign, this is a road, and we would label that manually it's incredible and now we just put video right into the car and let the car figure it out by itself and and this technology is very similar to the technology of large language models but it requires just an enormous training facility and the reason for that is because there's video is the data rate of video the amount of data of video is so so high well the the same approach that's used for learning physics the physical world um, from videos that is used for self-driving cars is essentially the same um, AI technology used for grounding large language models to understand the world of physics. Uh, so technologies that are uh, like Sora, which is just incredible, um, uh, and other technologies, VO from, from uh, uh, Google, incredible. The ability to generate video that makes sense, that are conditioned by human prompt, that needs to learn from video. And so the next generation of AIs need to be grounded in physical AI, need to be under, needs to understand the physical world. And the, only, the, the best way to teach these AIs how the physical world behaves is through video, just watching tons and tons and tons of video. And so the, the combination of this multimodality training capability is going to really require a lot of uh, computing demand in the years to come. Jensen, as always, super cool stuff and great to be able to talk to you. Dan and I really appreciate it. Jensen Wong, everybody, founder and CEO of NVIDIA. Great to see you guys. Thank you.